Oh, look, 911. Mm. That's a good looking car. Yeah. Yeah. And there's another one, <laughs> 911. Yeah, that's, <laughs> that's definitely a good looking car. New Prius. That is a good looking car. I really yeah. like that car. I feel like we should see more good looking cars on the road. Like the Mazda 3 is a good looking car. The Lucid is definitely a good looking car. Right. I don't think Porsche has a bad looking car in their entire lineup right now. I wish that we see more emotions on the road, like yeah. a Ferrari, for example. Lambos. Lambos. I don't maybe. think Lambos are necessarily really good, look like pretty. They're striking. But they're, yeah, they're really unique. You know what we should see more? Astons. Astons? Exactly. <laughs> I'll Why think the same don't thing. we see Astons on the road? Yeah. Why don't we? And that's a very good question indeed. I mean, think about the first car you fell in love with. You know, the one that made your head turn and made your heart beat a few ticks faster. I'm almost certain it had nothing to do with horsepower or top speed, but what it did have was a design that called out to your emotional side. That part of you that you repress in favor of practicality and functionality. As much as we like to count the number of practical reasons we like a certain car, design plays a much bigger role than we care to admit. We want to feel a sense of happiness, joy, and excitement each time that we see a car, whether that's because of how striking it is, how unique it is, or even just how beautiful it is. And when it comes to evocative design, from the curves and the body lines, even to the way that the doors open, one car company springs to mind, Aston Martin. Fortunately, our friends at Aston Martin of San Diego gave us the keys to this gorgeous Vantage in Flug Platz Blue so that we could spend the day with it and hopefully find out if it's as beautiful to drive as it is to look at. So today we're driving a 2020 Aston Martin V8 Vantage. And this is in a baby blue color and it has this like a navy blue, like a dark blue trim. Interior color, not, as, not a fan of, but exterior color, especially under like soft shadows or soft lighting, the car looks amazing. Beautiful. The car looks as good as I would want it to look. Like I want to be wowed by the car when I see it in person. Like that was my only thing I was thinking about. Like when I approach the car, oh, that's beautiful. And it really is. Yeah. It really is so pretty. We're gonna to try to answer the question that we posed earlier in this video, and that is, why don't we see more Astons driving around? Okay. So we've been driving around the car for about two hours now, and having driven it, at first it took a little bit of getting used to, like understanding the timing of the gears, the shifting, how it feels just to like help to rev the car, even changing, changing gears, like changing the drive modes. That is shockingly difficult in this car, because instead of a regular, like gear shifter or a regular like knob that you can shift, shift gears with, they're all individual buttons and they're placed you know around around the center console, and it's just pressing them individually like it's it's a little overwhelming. I don't know. Well, it's just it's kind of annoying. I think <laughs> that aside, once I learned how to really drive the car properly, it does shift pretty quickly. Even like the the up shifts and the down shift, it's basically what you what you would expect. Right. I don't think it's as, as fast as like. PDK in a Porsche, but like I, it's as fast as you need it to be. I firmly believe that people who buy Astons aren't necessarily in it for the performance per se. They just want to know that their cars are fast enough, probably not as fast as a Ferrari or a Porsche, right, right. but just fast enough because I think the real appeal of an Aston is more emotional. How does it make you feel when you look at it? How does it make you feel when you listen to it? So from that angle, ye. What are your thoughts? From the outside, it is so nice to look at. It is so enjoyable. It is like, oh, like that's just a pretty car. And then you get inside the car and I feel like it's very much let down by the design choices within the car itself. I talked about the center console earlier. The layout is, it's too, it's, it's just not elegant enough. Uh, and all the touch points just aren't there yet. Uh, something squeak here and there. And basically for a car that costs almost two hundred thousand dollars you just you expect a lot more i think it's fair to just expect that because you could either spend your money on this or there's a lot of other like pretty decent options out there like porsche 
or you could get an R8. What other sports cars are there? Are this, like, you know, it's funny because I was trying to think about that too. Like, there's nothing that's really interesting to me because you can't get a Lambo for this price. You can't no. get a Ferrari for this price unless you shop used and really older. You can shop like a, like a like an old like Ferrari California. Ford, Those yeah. go for like 80k used. Really? Yeah. Oh. Those are really cheap. That's actually quite compelling, I think. <laughs> I kind of like, like those. I'm going to have California. <laughs> <laughs> Let's use the AMG GT as an example. Would you look at the AMG and say, that looks nicer than an Aston Martin? No, not a chance. Like, not, not a single chance that I would ever say that. But then, <laughs> I get into the car, and I think... Huh. <laughs> this is a nice car. It's also got the push buttons yeah, the for, big... the, for the for the gears, yeah. gear selectors, but they're laid out in a much more logical way. In my Macan, there are buttons for days. Like, there's more buttons than that exist in the Macan than in here, but it's just the way you lay it out matters so much. Right. Aston Martins have always been an aspiration for me, so you'll understand how nervous I felt hopping into the driver's seat, because for the first time, I'm actually meeting one of my heroes. Michael, now it's your turn. And there's one question that I had on my mind. I know that you've been a huge fan of Aston Martin. Actually, when this opportunity came about, you were so excited. And after years of wanting to work with Aston, what's it like for you to finally be in the driver's seat of an Aston? It's a lot of emotion, to, you, to be honest with you. There's so much visual drama with this vehicle. And I think that's that's why as a brand, I've always been attracted to Aston's, just because they're um, a brand that really focuses on that strength, which is aesthetics. The interior makes you feel like you're in a race car because it's blanketed. In Alcantara. In Alcantara. It's a grand tour that kind of reminds you that it's also a race car. I appreciate that. Uh, the design itself is kind of subdued. Like, Ian and I were thinking about yeah, it, and it's it's definitely. very subdued. My takeaway from this is that this particular model of the Aston can be appreciated by Aston aficionados. I like the drama that's, that's represented in the exterior of the car. I like the brand um, history. In my head, it feels very premium from that perspective. I'm really having trouble explaining this because I don't want people to feel like it's not a special car. I drove my friend's LC500 along the same roads, in the same neighborhood, and that one has a V8, and that one is $100,000. It's a $100,000 car, and that made me feel special. And maybe he's right. Maybe it's because of the, the value. It's only $100,000, relatively speaking, and you get so much. But for the Aston, yeah. it's a $200,000 car, so you want to feel a little bit more special inside. Earlier, we were trying to think of another car in this price range that would look not even prettier, but just as pretty as this. And we actually couldn't think of one. So if you are an Aston fan, like I am, you'll appreciate the brand and this car from that perspective. The question that we wanted to answer at the very beginning of this video was, who is this for? And why right. don't we see more of them? Right, why don't we see more of them? I think it's become kind of painfully obvious why we don't see more Astons on the road. You can't really expect the looks of the car to hold you over, right? To be the only reason you decide to choose this over basically a 911. Honestly, I feel like the person that buys this car is a better person than I am because they are buying a car that makes my life better. <laughs> because when I see this car on the road and I'm following this car, it's, it's something I, to behold. It's making my life better. Because yeah. I'm like, wow, that is so pretty. If we pretend that this is, we live in a vacuum and this right. is the only car that existed, it's a nice grand tour. It really is. It feels amazing. It feels good on the road. It sounds good. It looks beautiful. If I ever saw someone with this car in a parking lot, I would look at them and I would immediately think, you are a person of taste. No doubt in my mind, like, respect for that choice. Yeah. Like for me, I'd, I'd be so drawn to the other options out there, but it's not to say that I don't respect this car. Totally understand why it exists. It's just so niche. The people who are staring at the car earlier, I you know, I try to look at the people yeah, yeah. and see how they react. They're, they were all smiling. They're like, oh, look at that car. No, yeah, people people gave thumbs up yeah. and like, hey, yeah. that's awesome. Or it's a nice so, car. So yeah, hey, yeah. It's a nice car. Yeah. As opposed to, yeah, if you're in a Ferrari or a Lambo, I think it, it could come off as, 
a little gauche, a little too like flamboyant. Too much. Yeah. Right? It's just too much. Yeah. Not not the case with this. Not with this one. I'm honestly not just trying to be nice. This car is made for a particular person, someone who puts emotional design very near at the top of their priority list. I'm that person. Do I feel that there's room for improvement? Certainly, mostly in the interior. Fortunately, we were told by Aston Martin that the newly redesigned interiors are coming to the US very soon, and I can't wait to sit inside one and experience it. Even though we have an idea as to why we don't see that many Astons on the road, Think of it as rare pieces of art. Most won't be able to afford them, but thank goodness someone can, so that the rest of society can appreciate their beauty. They're providing me with one of the most beautiful sights that I can experience while I'm driving. And I would like to thank anyone out there who is providing this amazing experience to me. Of course, we would also like to thank Aston Martin of San Diego for providing us with the chance to spend some time with this car. If you're ever in the market for what both Michael and I believe to be the paradigms of automotive beauty, make sure you go to Aston Martin of San Diego. It's been said never to meet your heroes in person because you don't want to be disappointed. But you know what though? I'm glad I did.